B.B. King is the idol of the new generation. His preacher style of blues singing has attracted not only the following of young ghetto blacks, but thousands of young white fans. For example, here at Santa Barbara College in California. People would ask me to sing spiritual songs, they usually would thank me and was very kind to me. But usually, if a guy asked me to sing blues, I uh, usually had a very fine tip waiting for me. And I guess, even though I was a church member and very active in church and the spiritual world, that is, I was a little bit hypocritical because I um, would take a drink ever so often. I found that on some Saturday evenings after working on the plantation all, all week, I would make more money just singing on the street corners than I had all week working on the plantation. So all that helped me to really make up my mind to really be um, into this category. Then later on, I got a job as a disc jockey. From there on, I started recording. After my ninth record, I had a hit record called Three O'Clock Blues. And uh, from that time until now, I've made uh, well over 300 records. I guess as a plow boy, I was something like, they, w they used the word today, a very super uh, farm hand. According to statistics, um, a guy, they tell me, wa walks on an average of about five miles per hour. And following a mule on the plantation, sometime you uh, maybe walk just a little bit faster. But uh, even at five miles per hour, working 12 hours a day, which is about 60 miles a day, about six days a week, and you would do that about six months out of the year, uh, which would run up in the thousands of thousands of miles. So I would think in 16 years of doing that, I've walked practically around the world, just uh, 
following the mule. <laughs> All of that made me um, ready for today because I learned that hard work then didn't hurt me and it kind of prepared me for hard work today. A black blues singer trying to get people to listen to blues. <laughs> such a turbulent life as his blues contemporaries. He has refused to migrate to the big cities and has preferred to remain in the simplicity of rural Texas countryside. musicians, the young British groups uh, that have re-imported blues back into America, and the white youth started to do research on it, and of course a lot of these fine musicians have mentioned the fact that they learned how to play uh, from a lot of the black uh, blues singers. So now you, you take my music, <coughs> we'll never die. I'll tell you what, of course. I invented this music way back in, well, I was 14 years old, somewhere along in 1911 or 12, and I just increased as I hear different records playing, different people sing, and I can write my songs by my ear. I don't write it by, you know, you know, writing, or a poem all my life, or a sharecropper. you waiting for a man on the phone. That's what they call a sharecropper. Then you, if you make two bales of cotton, that'll pay for your indebtedness. And, and one of them bales of cotton will go to the landowner free. You wasn't gonna get no money, but they said, you get half of what you make. That's what you call a sharecropper. <laughs> Get your rocking chair. See 
around and light down the cave for one day. Just remember that sunshine that always follows the rain. You're gonna have your troubles and dreams and dream all of your troubles away. And dream all of your troubles away. Here, as in many of the penitentiaries, the inmates are mostly black. The minority has become the majority in prison. I beg your pardon. When are you leaving here? Oh, I'm leaving here. Uh... January 10th, which will be coming up pretty soon. I'm pretty happy about the idea. Yes. Well, I've been here for four months now, um, which is four months too long, yes. actually. Yes. How come did you How come did you come here? What well, happened? I'm here. Well, say for taking things that don't belong to me. We'll call it a 20th century Robin Hood. I was born in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, I came to New York when I was about uh, 16 years old, go to school, to finish, to get an advanced education more than I would be uh, able to get in the South. My father was uh, a spiritual uh, teacher, music teacher, and he taught uh, a cappella for 50 years, you know. So I had a musical background, but later on in life, I, uh, Went to experiment in drugs. <laughs> that was uh, my uh, downfall, you know. And uh, I've been arrested uh, several, well, numerous times, repetitious ones, all uh, relating to uh, drugs. And this is uh, now that I'm 44, and I have, uh, I'm finishing up serving a year. I've decided to uh, to leave it alone. And uh, I'm going to try to uh, go back in the music business. I want to say a nine-piece band, also a seven-piece.
wonder what made grandpa. Oh, love, oh, grandma, so I guess grandma can do the thing she did 50 long years ago. Tell me what made grandpa. Oh, love, oh, grandma, so. I guess grandpa can do all the things he did 50 long years ago.
stay with the musical theme after the break with a touching and tuneful... Touch it. Yes, you can. 